Hey, how are you guys today? I just wanted to thank you so much for listening, beloved saints and sons and daughters of the Almighty. Um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Uh, today we're doing Revelation 18, and uh, this one's really cool because it talks about Mystery Babylon, and many people believe it's Mecca. Uh, some people believe it's Los Angeles. It's a city, right? Uh, some people say it's all of America. And some people say it's New York. Some people say it's the Vatican. Uh, some people say it's Las Vegas. And some people say it's Amsterdam. Um, and some people say it's uh, in Iraq. And I like the Iraq theory. I really like that one because that's where Babylon was originally. It was in Iraq. And uh, the original Babylon. And then the... Um, the uh, the Tower of Babel, and then also the other Babylonian Empire um, that happened many years later with Nebuchadnezzar was also in Iraq, which I, I thought that was fascinating, but that's not it either. <laughs> According to scripture, that's not Mystery Babylon, but it's uh, it's uh, it's interesting. I do like that that theory, but it's not it's not it. So I'm gonna t try to well. Based on my, uh, based on using scripture, the, on, this is just a theory based on scripture. I just want to preface all of this. And, uh, but uh, let's go, let's go through it and try to figure this out. And we're going to use scripture to reveal itself. We're going to use scripture to reveal itself. So this great city, Mystery Babylon, has not come into play yet. It is not, uh, it's going to be an end time city. It will become a wicked, unclean, tainted city. Uh, all the world will worship idols from it, and most all nations and peoples will pay a tribute tax, a tithe, uh, to this na this city, and sh it will become extremely wealthy. And uh, this is the key to understanding Revelation 18: is this tithe, tax, tribute. It'll be. Um, this is uh, talking. Of, this is spoken of in Daniel 11. It talks about this tax, and also. It is ties in with the mark of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast is um, giving an offering to a false man god, and this is this false messiah is going to claim to be a false. He's going to be claiming to be God. He is going to be. He's going to call himself uh, Yeshua, Jesus, right? So everyone's going to believe he's really Jesus. And what's fascinating is the Muslims are waiting for. Jesus, they call him Isa, to return. And uh, so they're waiting for him to return. The Christians are all waiting for uh, Yeshua to return. And the Jews are waiting for the Mashiach. And they don't necessarily think it's Yeshua, but it could be. And there, uh, some, some believe that it could be. We all know it, it is going to be Yeshua. But here's the problem. This first <laughs> Messiah that comes and claims to be the, the real Messiah. And, and the most, they have fooled, he'll fool the whole world, it says in Scripture. Most the whole world. Not everybody, of course. And, uh, well, this is going to be the false Messiah. He's the Antichrist, the first beast. And so he's going to deceive the whole world into believing him. And so whoever the first Messiah is and sets himself as a king on earth and claims to be God is 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 the wrong. Because we don't worship the created. We only worship the creator, right? And Yeshua was created. He's a created being. He's the first man to get eternal life. And so this is how we know that we don't worship him. And I'm going to be doing a video later on... Um, it's in, it's it's on my agenda, but it's going to be several videos actually, probably uh, five or six videos on uh, how the Messiah is not deity. He's not God. He was created. He's a man, and uh, the Father, the Almighty, is the Father. He's the Creator of the earth. He's always existed, and He's always will exist. And so, I don't want to talk about that today, but I just want to say that. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to point that out, but um, so this this uh, this city will um, become extremely wealthy, and I believe the Muslims and the Christians will unite under a treaty, and they will do this under this first beast, the false Messiah. The whole world will believe this man to be the real Messiah, and he will most likely reign 
as king of all the earth and the militaries behind him and he will be the um they will b- believe him to be the messiah so what city is this city that will be destroyed in one hour now this city that gets destroyed is not going to be the until the end of the tribulation by the way it doesn't happen at the beginning it happens at the end because a lot of things happen to happen happen first and i believe the tribulation is seven years based on daniel 9 and 27 um it's a seven year agreement but in the middle of that seven year agreement this messiah false messiah the first beast will set himself up as a god and he's going to have the whole worship worshiping him and so he's even if it is the real messiah we don't worship the created we only worship the creator now we give all honor and 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 glory to our high priest and king the messiah for what he did for us is there's nobody uh who was um holy enough on the whole entire universe that uh, deserves honor as much as he does but he doesn't does he doesn't get worship right he doesn't get uh we don't worship him as the creator okay anyways um let's move on let's move on okay so um mystery babylon is a city that will fall in one hour it'll be destroyed in the city at the end times will be corrupted city um the Catholic Church, I believe, will crown this false messiah with a crown, setting him as a king. They're going to believe that he's the real messiah. They'll be duped. And, uh, you know, I could understand how that could happen. But um, there's a lot of indicators um, that we need to look out for so we don't get fall for this false messiah. And so they're going to make an alliance with the Muslims and uh, the Jewish people. They're all going to be in agreement and they're going to accept him as the Mashiach, the Messiah, and um, the, the the Muslims are going to accept him as their Messiah as well. And so he's going to be, uh, he'll be king over the whole earth, and he'll have ten rulers under him. These are the ten horns on the beast, on the uh, dragon. These are the ten horns on the dragon. These are ten rulers that will rule under him and have uh, mighty power and influence over all the militaries and governments of the whole world. It's going to be a revival of the Roman Empire. So it's going to be North Africa, which is all Muslim. It'll be Middle East, which is all Muslim. And uh, Southern Europe, which many million, millions of Muslims live in, in Southern Europe. They're migrating there all the time and they have about five babies. The average family has about four to five babies every year. So uh, they're really uh, growing fast. It's the fastest growing religion in the world, Muslim religion. So that's just kind of a hint of what the agenda behind this false messiah will be. He's going to, but but he's going to initially um, be welcoming the Christian Christian religion and the Muslim religion and the Ju- Judaism. Okay, so uh, this idolatry will be promoted through the whole earth, and it will corrupt a lot of people into worshiping this man God. He will claim to be Yeshua, even though Yeshua we don't worship. And um, now the reason why he's going to become extremely wealthy, as we see in Revelation eighteen, uh, is. The whole world is going to be paying a tax, a tithe, a tribute. Now, if they only the Muslims have this uh, thing where they charge three percent um, uh, in their country, and the, I believe that he might in, in, in incorporate this three percent tax. So next time you, go, it might be ten percent because that's what the Christians we Christians pay. We pay ten percent to our Almighty, we to advance His kingdom in some way uh, of our income, and so. There's 195 countries out there in the world and in 7 billion people. So if only half half of the, the 7 billion people gave only $1, this man would be an instant billionaire. He would be an instant billionaire. He'd have 3.5 million. But he's going to have a lot more than 3.5 billion. He's going to have a lot more than that. So this city will become extremely wealthy really quickly. And everyone's going to believe he's a false messiah. And if anyone gives this tithe tax, if they buy, it says in scripture, anyone who, uh, nobody will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. So what is the mark of the beast? Giving a tithe tax tribute offering to a man God. So if we're giving an offering, 
we're buying $100 worth of groceries and $3 of that is going to this man god on earth. Well, that's idolatry. That's a mark of the beast. That's one mark of the beast. Okay. The other mark of the beast is not following the commandments of the Bible, not following the uh, holy days of the Bible in the Sabbath, the Saturday Sabbath. These are marks of the beast. Now, if you're following Ramadan on Friday, or if you're doing Sunday, which is sun god worship, Roman Emperor Constantine in, in, in introduced the true apostolic church into keeping Sunday. And so this is how Sunday got started. If you look in the historical evidence, everywhere in the Bible, nobody kept Sunday. And nowhere. It's uh, uh, you, Sunday is mentioned only eight times. It never says it's a set apart day or holy day. Saturday is mentioned... Um, hundreds of times in the Bible. And uh, Apostle Paul kept uh, the, the Saturday Sabbath uh, uh, 86 times in the book of Acts. And so um, he wasn't even Jewish. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. So you, we're supposed to keep the Saturday Sabbath. And, and then so in three, up until 325 AD, the apostolic congregation all kept Saturday Sabbath. So this is historical evidence that proves this. And any scholar will tell you, yes, Saturday was kept all the way until 325 AD uh, from the Christian Apostolic Church. That's well documented. So what happened in 325 AD? I'm going to tell you what happened. There was a Ro there was a Roman emperor. He worshipped the sun god, like most Roman emperors, on Sunday, and he that was his holy day. It was a rest day, and he mandated. He met with the real apostolic bishops, and he forced them to work, change the day to Sunday. And the Council of Nicaea, you can look it up, and he mandated everybody worship on Sunday. And that's how Sunday got started. So it's actually a pagan sun god worship, unfortunately. Now, a lot of people don't know that, so they're not going to be held accountable. But now that you do know, you need to prove all things and hold on to what is good, and Saturday is good. So that's another mark of the beast, is keeping another day, Sunday or Friday. And also not keeping any commandments that... Um, uh, not keeping the commandments of the Bible. That's another mark of the beast. Uh, as we see in Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11, it says, let, let, when you keep the commandments, let it be a sign on your hand and a mark on your forehead. That's the sign of Yah, and you'll get a seal of protection on your forehead. And you'll be protected from the wrath of Yah when you keep the commandments. So this, the, the Bible reveals itself. So what's the mark of the beast? It'll, it'll, it says it'll be a sign on your hand and mark on your forehead. It is what you do and what you think. And so if you're keeping another holy day, if you're keeping other commandments that are unbiblical and they're uh, traditions of men or if they're Muslim rules or, you know, other laws that aren't scriptural, well, that's the mark of the beast. Okay, and so we don't want to do this, especially if it's tied to this false Messiah man God. Okay, so let's get back on track here. So uh, just think how wealthy this country will be. I mean, it'll be phenomenally wealthy. And uh, all the this is why all the, sh the people on their boats uh, will be crying. The people that uh, deliver goods to this city because they won't be able to sell their goods to them anymore. They'll be crying because they're, it's the wealthiest city in the whole world. This is going to be after much famine, pestilence, war, disease. The whole world's going to be you know, poor, but they're going to believe this is the real Messiah. Oh, he's going to deliver us. Let's give him tithes. Let's give him this tribute or whatever. And so uh, they won't be able to get any more money and they're going to go out. Of, they're going to go bankrupt and they're scared. Right? And plus, I thought he was the real Messiah. So, you know, this is why they're weeping. Okay, so, uh, I believe this false Messiah, the first piece, will change, he will charge the whole world a 3% tax. I already talked about that. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Okay, so it says there will be musicians from all over the world wanting to perform and play music for this false Messiah who they believe to be the real Messiah. So, this will stop. This music will stop in one hour. And I'm just going through the Revelation verses. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell you what you guys want to know what the, the city is. I'm gonna tell you right now what it is, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, show you how Scripture reveals itself. So are you guys ready to hear what this city is? This mystery Babylon? Okay. So in Scripture we see that the the tie-in with the great city being called Mystery Babylon, and we see this great city also called. None other than, 
Are you ready for it? Jerusalem. <laughs> Can you believe that? Jerusalem is the great city of mystery Babylon. Okay, and the reason why that is, I'm going to give you a scripture verse to back it up, but the reason why that is, is it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, that he's going to set, the, this false Messiah, is going to set himself up a, as a man God on earth, and he's going to set a throne in the temple. They're going to rebuild the temple in Revelation 11, it says. And um, they're going to be sitting, he's going to set up a throne and stop the sacrifices of the Jewish people. And he's going to set up a throne and he's going to rule and reign from this temple in Jerusalem. He's going to pro pro proclaim to be the real Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. And he's going to say he's a God man, which we, we can't say, even if he was the real Messiah. Of course, he's, he's the son. And so uh, this is the abomination of desolations. This is this is it. This is when we run to the hills and we go hide and we dig ourselves in and, and make sure we have plenty of water because it's going to be about three and a half years of tribulation. A lot of people are going to be martyred. But just remember, if you are martyred and you don't deny Yah's name, guess what? You're going to be in the kingdom. I'm wearing all white robes with the Messiah, so you, when you die, you'll be wake, you'll be woken up in a second. It'll be a flash of you'll you'll think it'll be a thousand years might have passed, but you'll be, you know, it only actually actually uh, it'll only be about whenever the Messiah returns. That's when you'll be revived back to life. But you'll be re revived and you'll be part of the kingdom. So it would be a, quite an honor to be martyred because you passed the ultimate test. You didn't deny Yah's name or His commandments. And here's a very interesting fact, okay? So a lot of people say, well, I'd rather live, right? Well, just keep this in mind, okay? Muslims do this. Um, they'll say to a Christian, hey, are you gonna willing to are you willing to deny the Messiah and uh, Yahweh uh, and your commandments and, and become a Muslim and will save your life right now? And then the Christian will go, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and save my life. But guess what? They just lost their eternal life because they denied the, 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 the Almighty. So they might have lost their eternal life. I can't say that, they, that for sure because the Almighty decides who gets eternal life and who doesn't. But don't ever deny Yah's name or His commandments, even unto death. Because if you do, you pass the ultimate test and you'll be precious in Yah's eyes. You'll be precious. And you will be in the kingdom you will be part of the royal family if that happens so it'll be quite an honor and here's the, here's the other part so there there has been christians who denied their faith for to save their eternal to save their physical life they denied being a christian they wanted to convert to muslims and then they said okay so you you completely deny your almighty yes they said that, and they said, "Do you deny uh, the Almighty uh, uh, and the, His commandments? And you're willing to follow uh, Allah and follow His commandments?" And they they said yes. And guess what? They killed them anyways. So not only did they lose their physical life, but they lost their eternal life. So don't even do it. Don't do it. Do not deny Yah's name even unto death, because they're gonna kill you anyways. Okay. They don't care about you. They just want to. They just want to ruin you, ruin your eternal life. Don't let them do it. Don't let anyone steal your crown. Okay. So don't trust anyone and don't deny Yah's name, and you will be uh, clothed in righteousness, and you will dwell in Yah's royal family, and that would be awesome. Okay. So, anyways, let's get back on track. Um, okay. So here's the Bible verses that back it up. Okay. Revelation eighteen ten. Standing. Far away from the fear of her torment, saying, Whoa, whoa, the great city Babylon, the strong city, for your judgment has come in one hour. There you go. So the great city called Babylon. You see the tie in there? Great city is called Babylon. And then we see Revelation 11.8, where it ties in the great city with Jerusalem. Ready? So the great city is Babylon, and now the great city is going to be tied in with Jerusalem. Ready? Revelation 11.8. The dead bodies will be in the streets of the great city, which spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our master was crucified. Well, who's our master? Yeshua. So it's all in code, man. It's How awesome is that? The Bible reveals itself. How cool. We don't even have to do anything. We just have to read our scriptures and we can see this. Revelation 17, 8. And the woman who you saw 
is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So this great city will rule over the earth and uh, all the kings of the earth, pretty much. They will be powerful. I did a study on this and all the militaries that are in Europe, in the Middle East, in Turkey, and in, in North Africa, if they combine together, they would be one of the largest militaries in the world. And if they were able to get Russia and America on their side, there would be nobody who could even come close to trying to defeat, to defeat his power. And this is what's going to happen, I believe. Uh, if America backs him up, then forget about it. There's nobody's going to be able to go against him. It'll be over, and they you will have to. Uh, they'll force this religion on everybody. They'll they're going to burn the Bibles. They're going to take Bibles off the internet when he sets up himself as a king. Um, so it's not going to be pretty. But there you go. The Bible reveals itself. And oh, I also forgot to mention this. Uh, the first time we see this number six 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 is with um, there were 666 talents of gold that was paid to Solomon in taxes, right? And so this ties in with the mark of the beast. It's paying this tax tithe tribute. of six, and, and This is the 666, right? Um, so it's, it's just, it's all interconnected. The Bible reveals itself. D Daniel 11 talks about this tax he's going to charge. And so... Um, it's it's a it's a it, there's two things that are mark of the beast not following the commandments of the Almighty and following other commandments and then paying an offering uh, which is idolatry if you're paying an offering to a man god on earth that's idolatry and so this is also a, a mark of the beast and and I just have a, a small theory I want to throw out there and it's just I, I I just like to play around with this one the six 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 well what is six represent uh the first time we see six in the bible is um this is when uh man was created man was created on the sixth day but also um satan was created on the sixth day he's a cherubim he was created on the sixth day he's a beast of the field right and all the beasts of the field were created on the sixth day before man so satan was created before man on the sixth day and he's the most the satan is the most cunning beast of the field so, um, so, so, what does the six 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 represent? I believe it represents a man made religion, a man made economy, right? Um, where we you pay tithes to a false god, and uh, a man made uh, military. All right, so it's all man. Instead of having Yah, which you know, or Yeshua be our king, and currency in the kingdom was food. Um, food was currency. In fact, you would pay your tithe with food. Um, so you would use food for currency, and that's how I believe it'll be in the millennium. Um, and also, um, the religion was following the, the commandments of the Bible, not following man-made rules or man-made religions, right? So I believe the six is a man-made religion, man-made, uh, this triple six is a man-made religion, man-made economy, and man, which is all about merchandising and getting people to covet and buy new cars, buy a bigger house, buy this, buy new clothes, buy Armani suits so you look awesome. You know, it's all about merchandising and making a bunch of money. It's all that, that's the economy. You know, it's not about being humble and meek and not, you know, needing much and, and, and giving your money away and helping others, right? It's more about giving yourself and making yourself look better and, 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 and more successful and. So, you know, it, it's just, it's all about man and, and his ways. And it's uh, it's inward and selfish where it should be outward and giving, right? And so, uh, what does the 6-6 six, six, uh, point to? Uh, these triple sixes points to Satan. He's behind the whole thing. And he was also created on the sixth day. And it's a, it's a worship of Satan. If you're following a false religion, you're worshiping Satan who was created on the sixth day. If you're doing, uh, 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 you're having covetousness and you're watching these TV shows with this brand new car, it looks awesome, you want to buy it, that he's, he's, he's influenced you in your economy to buy things that you don't need. He's uh, Satan. He's, he's trying to make everybody broke and, and into slavery, paying these high rents on their homes and mortgages and high uh, car payments. And he's just trying to put you into slavery and bondage to him so he can keep you distracted and overworked and keep stay away from uh, Yahweh. And so you have time to do ministry and to help others and to uh, pray and to do good things. And 
and of course this man-made military, uh, Yah's military, <laughs> is is powerful angels, right? And and um, and the world's military is all they do is fight with each other. And throughout history, though, there's so many wars. There's always a war going on. There never has not been a war. And so, who's behind that? Satan, right? Because people covet land, or they they they're 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 scared of this guy because he has a bigger army, and so they're fearful. And yeah, and, and the devil puts fear in their eyes, and so they'll attack the other person, and then they'll try to make take their kingdom over. And it's just that's been happening for all these hundreds of years, and and that's not going to happen in the millennium, right? There's going to be one king, and he's going to rule the horde. Everyone's going to keep the commandments, and. And that's that's what I call seven 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 because you know uh, Yahweh is going to have Yeshua on Earth and everything is going to be perfect, right? It's uh, seven is the the number of uh, um, deliverance, and it's also the number of uh, completeness, complete deliverance. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I believe this six six six, the triple six, um, could be. Now this is just a theory, obviously, that it, it points to. Uh, sat satanic worship by following his military, following Satan's economy, and following Satan's religion, right? These man-made stuff. All this is man-made, man-controlled, but Satan's behind the scenes orchestrating all that. And it's basically worshiping him. And that's really what he wanted. He wanted to be his own god. And he's getting that. He's getting that. He's got 6,000 years of that. And he has uh, been a god on earth. So... Um, all right, so that's just a theory. Uh, I like to play around with it, but it, it could be off. I don't know. All right, anyways, let's go to the next one. All right, so uh, this false messiah will negotiate with the Muslims to rebuild the temple to do sacrifices again, as prophesied in Revelation 11. Then in the middle of that, the seven years agreement, we see Daniel 9.27, or 9.25, the false messiah will take over Jerusalem. 9.27. I think it's 927. Uh, I have to look that up. Hold on. I was correct. Daniel 927. So yes, uh, it, it's a seven-week agreement, and uh, which means seven years. Uh, seven heptides is what it's called, which is sets of seven. So we believe it's seven years, and that's how long it'll be in tribulation. It's very similar to... You know, there were seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine with Joseph. So it's going to be the same thing, I believe, at the end times. So Joseph is really a picture of Yeshua. <laughs> Yeshua was um, and Joseph were both betrayed by their brothers, thrown into a pit. Um, Joseph was thrown into a pit and, and Yeshua is thrown into a tomb outside of the ground and into a pit. And then um, both were believed to be dead. But we're alive, right? Joseph was alive. Jacob was really excited about that. And all the apostles were solely excited about, and Mary, uh, about Yeshua being alive. And uh, both became the second most powerful people in the world. Uh, Joseph was the most powerful. And Yeshua, the most powerful uh, person in the universe, right? And so uh, a lot of similarities. And also uh, that's why I think there's a tie-in with the seven years and then three and a half years. But... Okay, so let's let's uh, let's talk about some of these verses here. Um, in Revelation one, it talks about these unclean birds. It's interesting that the city, one city, a huge collection of demons and unclean birds and devils and wicked spirits, all because of this huge idolatry. So Jerusalem, which is the holiest city in the world, is going to be a dwelling place for all these unclean birds and wickedness and, and the crimes. And the wicked idolatry is going to go up to heaven, and Yahweh is not going to put up with that for long. And um, okay, so let's read Revelation eighteen three. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. On the earth, the earth has fallen into idolatry, and fall followed after. This false messiah, believing he's a real messiah. The whole world will be tricked. That's what that's talking about there. Revelation 18.4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not be not partakers of sins, and receive her plagues. So he doesn't want us to follow this this religion. We need, This is why it's good to know this. Um, now, here's really what's really amazing. I, I, when I, after I'm reading through this, he allows his people... 
to repent even after they've taken the mark of the beast. So even after you've taken the mark of the beast, you can repent. So don't let anyone tell you you can. You're not doomed. Yah is an almighty of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. He just wants you to repent. He loves people who repent. Oh, he dearly, he, he loves Ahab. Ahab repented from his sins and put on sackcloth and fasted. And, and Ahab was wicked. He was an idolater. And he didn't, he didn't get, to, he didn't, he got, uh, he got, he got saved from wrath. Also, uh, Nineveh put on sackcloth and fasted. And, and Yah relented from destroying him, them. And they were the wickedest city in the earth. They would skin people alive. Um, the, yeah, so, I mean, um, there's all kinds of evidence of that. So, super important to remember, even if you've taken the mark of the beast, don't let people tell you if you have the mark, you'll never, you, you'll never get to live again. Don't believe that. I, I don't believe it, and, and, and Scripture doesn't s indicate that anywhere. It seems to indicate that, but if you read through it, you'll see that, it, that he gives second chances. And this is one, one, come out of her, my people, that you may not partake in her sin. So these people are already taking the mark. He says, come out of her, my people. So they've already taken the mark, but he wants them to come out. He wants everybody to live. He wants everyone to get eternal life. He doesn't want you to suffer. And those who take the mark of the beast will suffer a painful death, and, and they will will suffer... Well, these scorpions will bite them and sting them and they'll suffer for five months. And so you don't want to take this. And super important. And then, okay, so let's read Revelation 18, 5. For her sins have reached up into heaven. Yah hath remembered her iniquities. I think um, is, you know, uh, a lot of people say, well, why did, uh, why was there a earthquake uh, in Haiti. Well, um, what happened in Haiti is Christianity or uh, was the, f the main religion, but I think it was the year 2000, they changed it to voodoo. They changed the religion to voodoo. So Yah gave them seven years to change it back to Christianity, but they didn't. So he destroyed their capital and there was a huge... Uh, so he doesn't he doesn't want that to happen. And, and, and uh, you know, he's only going to give it a certain amount of time when the idolatry and the wickedness and the sins just, you know, there's too many demons there and there's too much bad stuff happening and he doesn't want it. He needs to get rid of it. He has to clean a house, basically. And this is what's going to happen with this city as well. Okay, Revelation, Revelation uh, 18.21. And a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, This... With violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown to down, and shall be found no more at all. So it seems that there's going to be a huge uh, tidal wave that's going to destroy this city, Jerusalem. And possibly a meteorite will hit it, and uh, an earthquake even possibly as well. But it's it, 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 there's actually uh, several uh, Bible verses that indicate it's going to be an earthquake. So I think it's going to be two things, a tidal wave and an earthquake. Uh, but mainly an earthquake because Jerusalem, I think, is is far from the water, but not that far. So uh, it might be both. It might be both, but it will be destroyed. Uh, it, there's three scripture verses that say it's going to be a great earthquake. So, uh, and only one saying it's going to be a tidal wave here in Revelation 8. So it might be both. Okay. All right. Uh, Revelation 18, 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no one buyeth their merchandise anymore. So they're going to be crying because nobody, they're the, they're the richest, wealthiest city in the world because they're going to be instant billionaires and they're going to continue to get billions and billions of dollars. And so they'll just be spending it f like frivolously and a whole world will come and, and try to sell stuff to them and they're not going to be able to do that anymore. Okay. And then because of that tax, right? Okay. So Re Revelation uh, uh, 18, 9. The kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived wantonly with her will weep and wail over her when they look at the smoke of her burning because they committed idolatry and they gave their militaries over to them and they let him have control and make the rules. And he, he's going to take Bibles off the internet. He's going to confiscate Bibles. He's going to speak blasphemies of the, against the Almighty, it says in Scripture, uh, of the Bible. He's going to speak blasphemies of the Almighty of the Bible. And so um, that's going to be horrible. He's going to get a head, head wound to his head and he's going to live, right? So these are all indications of what this uh, end time event is going to happen. Okay, Revelation um, 
1823, the, the light of the lamp will shine no more at all in you. The voice of the bridegroom and all the bride will be heard no more in all of you. For your merchants were, were the princes of the earth. For you, for with you, sorcery of the nations were deceived. So, so it'll be a bad time. And then it says in Revelation 18, 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, it has become a habitation of devils and a hold for every un unclean spirit and a cage for every unclean animal and hateful bird. So, uh, yeah, there's just going to be extreme wickedness going on in that city. Okay, so let's get to the end here. Revelation 18, 24. And her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints, and all the earth were slain upon the earth. Wow. So this mystery Babylon um, will have the blood of the saints and also uh, the blood of the Messiah. So who killed the Messiah? Well, the Romans killed the Messiah and they killed the saints, right? And what um, what does that have to do with this end time event? Well, uh, a lot, basically. <laughs> um, let's just pull this up. So the Roman Empire... Uh, is still alive today through the Roman Catholic Church, right? Now, let me just preface this because um, I just want to say that I love every person that goes to church, and I love every person at all, all people, right? And um, people that go to church are good. People in the world are, are, are not usually not as holy as people that go to church, and so church is good. But what's better is to be in Yah's kingdom, to be a citizen in his kingdom. That's what... Now, Yah is not, he's not a Southern Baptist. He's not an evangelical. He's not a Calvary Chapel, member of the Calvary Chapel. He is a king, okay? He's a king. He's not, he's not a member of a church, okay? So he didn't send his son to bring a religion. He sent his son to bring a kingdom. And uh, so he sent his son to come down here and to get people baptized into the name of Yeshua so they can be part of Yah's kingdom, okay? Yah wants citizens in his kingdom. He wants servants in his kingdom. He wants royal uh, priests. He wants us to be a holy nation. He doesn't want us to be in a religion. So this is the highest level. Religion is good, but being a citizen in Yah's kingdom is the ultimate. And when you, and how do you become a citizen? You get baptized in his name, and you follow the rules of the Bible. You don't follow extra biblical rules. Nowhere in scripture does it say to pray to dead people. We don't do that, okay? This is a man-made tradition. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to worship on Sunday. This is another man-made tradition tied to paganism. So we want to follow with the Bible. The Bible says to worship on Saturday. The Bible says we only pray to the Almighty of the, the Almighty in heaven. We don't pray to Yeshua. Yeshua is a high priest. What is a high priest's whole job? It's to give offerings to Yahweh, right? Not to himself. He gives it to Yahweh. So, okay, so Yeshua is the high priest. And so we don't worship Yeshua. We worship Yahweh. So we want to make sure that we're not being corrupted by man-made ideas and man-made rules. and man -made. We don't want anything man. We want to follow the Bible, right? We want to keep it all. We want to be a citizen in Yah's kingdom. And even more than that, we want to be a royal servant. That's even better. And, um, you know, you're, that means you're doing kingdom work and kingdom things. And I believe that you'll be the one who gets to marry Yeshua in the kingdom. So, all right. So let's continue on. Um, so that aside, I don't want to say anything bad about the people that go to the Catholic Church or the people that actually work at the Catholic Church. I'm not going to say anything bad about that. I'm just saying that the doctrines aren't perfect. And you could say that with any church. There's 40,000 denominations and none of them can all be right. <laughs> right? But the Bible is correct and nobody can say that. So just follow the Bible and the rules in the Bible. You'll be good. All right, that's the citizen of a kingdom instead of a member of a church. All right, so anyway, let me get back to this thing about the Rome. Okay, Rome, <laughs> they killed all the saints, right? Okay, and so uh, Emperor Constantine changed it to Sunday, right? He changed the Sabbath to Sunday, which was prophesied in the scriptures. And then the Roman Catholic Church came out of that and kept this pagan sun god worship alive. And so Sunday is still being kept today, and this uh, this 
the the Catholic Church is the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest organizations in the world. Just in America alone, they're worth 170 billion dollars. That's more than Apple. That's more than the car companies. That that's just in America. You can just imagine how much wealth they have over the whole world. They have major real estate in big churches everywhere. They have major power and influence. Now, so. Now, this, this religion is still alive today, this sun god worship. A lot of people don't realize this, okay? So I'm not going to judge you if you're a Catholic. I'm not judging you because you don't know this yet. And so you need to learn it, and Yah gives you time to, to uh, learn this and, and walk your way out of it. And he's okay with that because they do, the good part is they do keep the Bible and they do pray to the Almighty. So those are the good two things, right? But we want to get rid of any man-made stuff that's been corrupted into that. Um, okay, anyways. So, this, this Roman Empire fell. The Roman Empire fell, but this religion, the sun god worship stayed. The Roman sun god worship. This is a type of military. Um, this is the type of mystery Babylon, right? Now, here's the interesting part. It says in scripture that the, 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 uh, the seven heads of the dragon or the seven times that the Roman Empire will be revived. Five has already happened. And I'll give you those. Charlemagne was the first revival of the Roman Empire in these territories, the northern um, North uh, Africa, southern Europe, and Middle East, has been revived, right? And uh, it was with Charlemagne. And the Pope crowned Charlemagne on the head. And so they, this was a revival of the Roman Empire with the military and with the religion, the sun god worship. And then it happened again with the Holy Roman Empire. Then Now the Pope was actually king. So it actually combined the two. And so the Pope was king. And he was also um, the religious side of it as well. So he was the military side and the religious side. And they killed a lot of... Uh, Sabbath keeping Christians and a lot of Jews and um, so they were wicked they used the Yah's name in vain and they didn't do righteousness uh, because they thought they were the only religion and um, so okay so that's the second time and the third time was Napoleon Napoleon revived the Roman Empire and again the Pope crowned him on the head right and then we have World War One, and then World War Two was a revival of the Roman Empire and, and Pope Pius he did not say anything bad about Hitler. In fact, they had even met. Um, there's pictures of them meeting. And so he never said anything bad about him. Even under Allied pressure, um, he didn't say anything. So he, he dropped the ball. A true Christian would say things and publicly say it out loud and say, this is an atrocity. We need to stop it. Da, 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 da. Nothing of this happened. So they were, I believe, secretly uh, allowing Hitler to do his thing. To save their own life, maybe, or they were in cahoots. Who knows? But they didn't do the righteous act of trying to stop them. Even if they were going to lose their life, at least they did, they did it in a righteous way. And they would be blessed in the kingdom for that. But they didn't do that. And that's not what a church does. So they dropped the ball. Anyways, uh, so when this false messiah comes... Here again, a revival of the Roman Empire. It'll be the same territories in northern uh, Africa, Middle East, and southern Europe. And guess what? He's going to be crowned by the Catholic Church again, I believe. Okay? That's my theory. And uh, again, this will be a revival. This is Mystery Babylon. See how it's tied in together? These are how they have the blood of the saints, the blood of Messiah. And it's all intertwined, right? And uh, eventually, at the three and a half year mark, in the middle of the seven years, uh, he's going to go after the Catholic Church and kill all the Christians of the world and try to kill all the Christians of the world and, and kill everyone of the Catholic Church. And he's going to kill uh, all Sabbath-keeping believers as well. And he's going to try. But there will be at the end of that, there will be 144,000 left who never took the mark of the beast and never denied Yah's name, and never denied keeping His commandments and His true Sabbath on Saturday. And they will have a seal on their forehead and be protected from um, the death angels and the spirit beings who will uh, you know, come and kill one-third of the population. There will be spirit beings that will kill one-third of the population, and there will be scorpions that sting people, and their pain won't stop for five months. And so this is how this mystery Babylon is still alive today and uh, it's going to be revived this military side of it and the economy will be 
um, a man-made economy where you're giving tithe, tax, tribute offering to this man god. So it's all tied in the military. Again, man-made military, which uh, is going to be killing people. Uh, this man-made uh, religion, sun god worship, and this man-made economy where you give a tithe, tax, tribute. And it's all pointing, this uh, this man-made uh, 666 is pointing to Satan who was created on the sixth day. He was a, the most cunning beast of the field. All the beasts of the field were created on the sixth day. And so uh, there you have there you have my theory, and I think it's it's it ties in pretty well with scripture. Now the the six 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 part is is more of a theory that I'm just playing around with, and, and I I like it. It's interesting, uh, but all the other stuff is really backed by scripture, but um, still is a theory I I think. And um, the main thing is um, how sad is Satan, right? Satan, he disobeyed Yahweh. He did all this, right, just to reign on earth uh, for these seven years. He, he's going to be the beast. He's going to be the demon inside this first beast. It says uh, a demon comes out and they look like frogs. There's a scripture verse in Revelation that says that there's demons that look like frogs that comes out of the mouth of the, the first beast and the false prophet. And... Um, and so that's how we know that um, you know that they're people. That it's not a it's not a it's not a uh, government. There'll be governments behind it, but but anyways, um, he did all of this just to be the king of the earth and rule and reign on earth for seven years, and then he's going to be utterly destroyed and he's never going to exist again. And so, what a horrible decision that Satan made, right? He should have been happy. He was one of the highest. Uh, cr of creation. I believe he, in Revelation, he has seven heads, ten horns. He was a dragon that flies. He's red. He's got these jewels on his chest that are similar to the jewels that the high priests wear. Um, he, um, he flies and, uh, you know, he uh, was a cherubim. He was a cherubim. He it says he, uh, uh, in a revelation, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel 28, talks about he's uh, a cherubim. And he, he was a guardian cherub, and he was supposed to guard Adam and Eve, and his job was to protect them. But he didn't. He got jealous of Adam because Adam was going to be part of Yah's royal family in the highest creation. But what a high honor that he has that he's actually guarding the Yah's royal family. And that's an high honor as well. And he coveted Adam's position and wanted it. And so he tricked them, so, and he did get it, but he's only going to have it for a short while, and then he's going to be utterly destroyed. So we need to just love what Yahweh gives us and be happy with it, and um, just remember to worship him and love him. And I believe that there is advancement in the kingdom. So whatever position you get in the kingdom, if you still continue to grow and to get better, I believe that you can be advanced in, in the kingdom and, and to continue to grow and to learn and to become more righteous and to, to make it as a, as a saint. Uh, we have to remember, Yah's an almighty of second chances. And, and so that's my theory as well. I think that, you know, even if, uh, you know, whatever position that you make it, you know, as long as you're, you're, you get eternal life, that's the most amazing thing, right? That's the most beautiful thing. And, and you get to, you want to be as close to Yah as possible. You want to be able to see his face. And that's, that's, a, that's really what we want to do. We want to, he wants us to dwell with him like Adam and Eve. And not everyone's going to be able to dwell with him and see his face. Only those that are in the New Jerusalem. And we want to strive for that because that's where he wants us. So it's super important that we try to push ourselves to be more righteous. Push ourselves to be more kind, more loving. And um, just ask for Yah for help in those areas. And... Uh, we want to make sure that we get our names written on a white stone and we want to get his name on our forehead. And I think it's going to say Kodesh to Yahweh because that's what the priest, the high priest says on their forehead. It says Kodesh to Yahweh, which means holy to Yahweh. And he's going to write that name. So it would be quite an honor to have that. And, and I think if you have this name on your forehead, you'll be able to enter the New Jerusalem because there's angels guarding the doors of the 12 entrances to the New Jerusalem. And remember the earth... It's going to be the same size, roughly, but the New Jerusalem is 1,300 miles by 1,300 miles by 1,300 miles. And so um, it's going to be a little bit bigger than America, but it's going to be that high as well. So there's room for millions and billions of quadrillions of saints. So um, push yourself. Strive to be more holy. 
do righteousness. And I hope this motivates you to read your scriptures and follow your scriptures so you too can be a citizen of Yah's kingdom and not follow a religion. Religions are good. It's better than being in the world, but being a citizen in Yah's kingdom is better. And that's really what we're looking for. And we want to follow the Bible, right? Saturday is the Sabbath, okay? Um, watch some videos on it. Study it. I have a couple videos on on my link. I hope you like this video and, uh, and um, I hope it motivates you to be more holy and to to seek his face more and to love our great almighty who loves you. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Have a blessed day.